So, uh, welcome to the third lecture um, of this uh, third week, the course on machine learning. The theme of this lecture will be Bayes or Bayesian belief networks. So, starting with the general characteristics of a representation, um, a Bayesian belief network, abbreviated BBN, has a number of synonyms. You can call base network, you can base Bayesian model, you can use only belief network, you can call it a decision network or some lengthy elaboration like probabilistic, directed, cyclic, graphical model. So, so essentially BBN is, is a probabilistic graphical model representing a set of variables and their conditional dependencies. And as a structure, it is a directed acyclic graph or DAC, abbreviated DAC. Uh, so a BBN enables us to uh, model and reason about uncertainty. Uh, BBNs accommodate both subjective probabilities and probabilities based on objective data. But we, in both cases, we talk more of assertive probabilities rather than probabilities uh, based on uh, frequencies. Uh, the most important use of BBNs is in revising probabilities in the light of actual observations of events. So if you look at this little example to the right, where you have three variables, rain, it's raining or not, there is a sprinkler on or not, the grass is wet or the grass is not wet. And um, so one can say there is a this kind of uh, graph represents some causal dependency. So uh, the rain can make the grass wet directly. The rain, the, the, the absence of rain can affect a, a, a person to put on the sprinkler. And when the sprinkler is on, the grass gets wet uh, also. So in a way, you can look at, uh, consider the, the, this kind of network in a forward manner, starting from the cause and looking at the consequences. But you can also do it backwards, so you can see, oh, is the grass wet? What is the probability for the grass? It is actually wet. And then uh, when you get data on uh, uh, how wet the grass is, you can infer probabilities of the likelihood of certain courses, uh, whether it's more likely that the sprinkler was on or that it was really raining. So the backward reasoning here is more of the, the end purpose of uh, this kind of representation. Uh, so one key theorem from probability theory uh, is called Bayes' theorem. This theorem has a fundamental importance for uh, the way we want to use uh, Bayesian networks for problem solving. Actually, Bayes' theorem talks about a situation where we have two variables, A and B, where B is dependent on A, or we can say A causes B. Uh, so there are three kinds of probabilities uh, that can be considered here. Uh, it's the independent uh, probability of A, we call it P of A, uh, and uh, similar for B, we have the prior probability of B, which means considering the probability uh, for B in isolation. Uh, then we can talk about the conditional probability so we can talk about the conditional probability for B given A and, and, and uh, vice versa, so the conditional for A given B. Uh, finally, we can talk about the joint probability for both uh, A and B considered together. Uh, and uh, uh, the joint probability for A and B can be proven to be computed as the, the, the multiplication of P and A uh, and the, uh, the conditional probability of B given A. Um, 
what is more interesting um, is um, how we can reason in this kind of network backward. So it, it's it's the case that for many domains, it's more likely that we we know the, uh, the there are data to, to support the conditional probability for B given A, which means is the for, in the four-way direction, uh, re, um, reasoning from cause to effect. Uh, so therefore, it would be very practical to have a theorem that can uh, infer uh, the, the opposite probability, uh, the reasoning from uh, from effect to cause, uh, instead of directly observing it. So, uh, unhappily enough, uh, the Bayes theorem does exactly that. So, except what the Bayes theorem says that we we can infer the conditional probability of A, uh, the cause, given B, the effect to be exactly the conditional probability of B given A uh, times the prior probability of A divided by the prior probability of B. So the intuitive meaning, of course, then is that Bayes' theorem really uh, defines how one can infer a conditional probability for a cause given a probability of a symptom. Uh, what you can see to the far right uh, is uh, just a graphical, intuitive way uh, of underpinning that the kind of proof that can be given for this theorem. So let's now look at the core components of this representation. Um, so nodes represent variables in the Bayesian sense, as described earlier can be observable quantities, hidden variables, or hypotheses. Edges represent conditional dependencies. So each node is associated with a probability function that takes as input a particular set of probabilities for values for the node's parent variables and outputs the probability of the values of the variable represented by the node. So a prior probability, if we look at the example to the right, uh, the example to the right uh, is the same we looked at earlier. We have rain, we have the sprinkler on, we have grass wet. So uh, the probability of rain uh, is given then by the two probabilities for the two feature values. So if rain is a feature, it, it can have the value true with a 0 0.2 probability, and it could have a value false with 0 0.8 probability. So then, um, if we look to a conditional probability, uh, in this case, we look at the probability of the sprinkler is on, given that it's rain. Uh, so uh, we can see here that uh, we have two cases. So either it doesn't rain, the rain is false, uh, then um, it's a 0 0.4 probability to the sprinkler is on, and, uh, and it's a 0 0.6 probability that, that uh, the, 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 spr um, the sprinkler is not on. In the opposite case, when, 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 it, when it's really raining, it, it's a much lower probability uh, that it's uh, the sprinkler is on, so it's very rarely you put on the sprinkler. So only in 0 point, uh, 0 point, 0 0.1 case you 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 have the sprinkler on. So um, so, so these kinds of small tables are are really the key information connected with each node in this kind of belief network, either prior uh, or conditional, and you see depending on how many connections there are, how many input there are, uh, edges there are to, uh, to a node, uh, you get a, a, a larger uh, table. Because 
typically here you, you describe uh, the probability function here in, in terms of a table. Of course also it depends on how many feature values there are. So, so if there are, should happen to be more than, than true and false values, an ordinal feature, then also the uh, table grows in, in signs. Uh, you, you also see on, on this slide that, that the joint probability function, there is a, a way to calculate that from the prior probabilities and and the uh, and the uh, conditional probabilities uh, and one can do that in a formal manner so as been remarked earlier um, um, it's more more likely in the domain that we have information about all these probabilities in a four-way direction, starting from causes and moving towards effects. So um, let's then look at uh, a minute at a related examples. So you recognize three of the variables, rain, sprinkler, and wet grass. What we did now was that we um, included a, a fourth variable called cloudy and changed the structure so that cloudy affects sprinkler and cloudy affects rain. But as you see, the connection between uh, rain and sprinkler uh, disappeared. So uh, this kind of alternative network um, uh, it, it is a base for, for uh, discussing another phenomena which we call um, conditional independence. And uh, I will talk about that in the next slide. Conditional independence means that uh, nodes that are not connected by any path represent variables that are conditionally independent of each other. So as you see in, in, the, in the alternative example uh, where we changed uh, the structure, sprinkler and rain is no longer related uh, because there is no path between them. So therefore, sprinkler and rain are considered as conditionally independent. And, uh, and uh, it's kind of obvious that, that the conditional dependency of, of sprinkler given cloudy uh, is one thing and uh, doesn't uh, change anything to include rain. So the conditional sprinkler of, of, uh, of sprinkler given cloudy and rain is the same as, as the first. So um, in this case, um, the, the yarn probabilities for the network can be calculated uh, as below on the slide. And as you can see, the nice thing here is uh, that we can calculate uh, the, the joint probability for all variables just by following uh, the structure uh, of the network in, in a formal manner. So we uh, essentially, uh, the joint probability is this product of the prior pro uh, probability for the independent variable uh, times the conditional uh, probabilities for the two middle variables that all uh, depend on cloudy, and finally on the conditional uh, probability of wet grass given the middle two. So this is a nice property of this kind of networks that we can do this kind of forward reasoning uh, just following uh, the structure of the network and uh, using uh, the probability table or probability function in each node. So uh, the examples we've shown earlier here are of course very small so uh, to exemplify the principles. However in realistic cases and here on this slide I've included a more a realistic one. Uh, these kind of network is 
are large and can be very huge. However, uh, due to the uh, properties of the Bayesian networks that we tried to illustrate in the last slew slides, um, it should be scalable uh, and, and manageable. But uh, the example here is more the one you would face in uh, reality. Uh, so now I want to talk about a few structural issues concerning this kind of networks. So uh, one key thing uh, is to understand that, that uh, a Bayesian network cannot include uh, a cycle. So the, the, you see here uh, the left example, uh, you see a valid directed uh, acyclic net, uh, graph. And uh, even if one of the arrows seems to point upwards, uh, this is more of a, of a depiction problem and doesn't cause a problem uh, and doesn't really cause any harm. However, as you see in the right example, uh, the, the arrow between A and C is now directed in the opposite direction, creating uh, a cycle. And uh, hopefully you have understood from, from the way this kind of um, reasoning behaves is that uh, it's strictly based on uh, working either entirely in the forward direction or in the backward direction. And uh, it's impossible to handle uh, this kind of this kind of cycle. So the next structural aspect I want to mention is that, of course, uh, when you study this kind of networks, you can see patterns, and uh, there are patterns of different kinds, but uh, there are few very very basic patterns. And uh, as you see here, there are three examples: sequence, which is uh, kind of obvious convergence where um, where two uh, two variables cause uh, a third and uh, divergence where one uh, variable have two two causes so uh, at this point um, we will not do much uh, about this and it doesn't really uh, we are not going to use um, um, the knowledge of patterns like this, but when um, you handle big networks, and especially if you want to modify networks and extend networks, uh, these structural aspects and the LOP2 and the ability to uh, treat these cases in a uniform fashion uh, is more important. So, if we turn to problem solving for this kind of representation, uh, it's already said uh, that uh, the main idea is to use the networks to infer probabilities of causes from the probabilities of effects. So, because um, a Bayesian network is a complete probabilistic model of the variables and the relationship describing effects in terms uh, of causes. Inferences typically aims to update the beliefs concerning the causes in the light of the new evidence. Uh, so backward inferences in a Bayesian network can be viewed as the answering of queries uh, about the state of, of, of a subset of variables, the hypothesis variables, or uh, the variables that are the potential causes. When other variables are observed, typically those considered the evidence variables. And the main vehicle for, for making this inference in the backward direction, so to say, is the use of Bayes' theorem, which actually uh, states that the conditional probability of the hypo uh, hypothesis given some evidence is equal to the prob conditional probability of the evidence given the hypothesis times the prior probability uh, of the evidence divided by the prior probability of, of the hypothesis. Uh, so this uh, base uh, theorem 
enables uh, uh, the, the carrying out of one inference step backwards in the structure. Uh, but because of the homogeneity of the structure, uh, this kind of inference can re be recursively applied throughout the whole structure using uh, uh, the base theorem in each step. So what does learning mean in this kind of representation? Yeah, actually there are two kinds of uh, possibilities for learning. One kind of learning we call here parameter learning. And as you understand, the only parameters, basic parameters that we have are the conditional probabilities uh, given a fixed variable structure. So, so, so we then assume we, we have a fixed number of variables and we have a fixed number of edges uh, connecting the units corresponding to the variables. And in for every node, we have this kind of table that uh, describes the probability function for the conditional probability for that node. And essentially, uh, the low-hanging fruit here is, of course, to be able to uh, manipulate and enhance the quality uh, of, of, of these tables are, are across the network. So it better reflects uh, the, um, uh, an adequate decision making uh, for, the, uh, for the, the domain. And that, of course, can then be based on available data. But uh, this is uh, kind of obvious. Uh, 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 very very standardized uh, learning process. What is more uh, tricky, of course, is to uh, learn in the sense of changing the structure. Uh, and one level there is, of course, to assume that we have the same variables, which means that we have the same nodes but we can modify the structure of edges among uh, the, the, number, the number of um, edges among the units. Uh, even more uh, advanced, so to say, is the addition of new variables. Typically, it's not so likely that we want to uh, modify uh, the 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 the, uh, the low level evidence. Uh, we can also say this is the input layer of the structure, uh, and not necessarily so the most abstract hypotheses. It's rather that it's more likely that we want to create uh, some in between variables, which are non-observables, and we could call them hidden. And you will see that there is a parallel here in the thinking about neural networks, uh, where we also will talk about input layer, output layer, and, and hidden, um, hidden layers. So this was the end of this lecture. Thanks for your attention. Um, the next lecture uh, will be on the topic of uh, neural networks. So thank you and goodbye.